Hi, good morning, everyone. Welcome to Y'all West. I'm Margaret Stoll, co-founder and co-director of Y'all West. I've been with the Y'alls for 10 years, but this is our very first virtual Y'all Stay Home. This could be a complete disaster, um, but that also is in, the, in keeping with the spirit of the Y'alls. You um, are here and we're excited to have you. You can still register for panels at any time uh, at yallwest.com backslash schedules, which I know you know because in fact you're here. Um, you can find signed book plated books at our partner Blue Bicycle Books, who you know is our beloved Y'all Fest co-partner. Co we are proud to say we have had over 45,000 registrations from around the world. Woo! As uh, Tori likes to say, from every continent except Antarctica. So if Antarctica, if you're out there, uh, please, you know, say hello. We'd like to count you too. Um, I think, Mel, this is the biggest uh, one we've ever had, isn't it? I think so. 46,000 is a record. <laughs> um, and so I would like to thank all the sponsors who uh, bring this festival to your video screens. Uh, this festival is presented by Fierce Reads and Penguin Teen, and our premier sponsors, Candlewick, Disney, Underline Novel, Epic Reads, Pick, and Literary Lion sponsors, HMH Teen, I Read YA, Riveted, Simon Teen, Owl Crate, Tour Teen, DC, and The Bookish Box. And again, we are in cooperation with Blue Bicycle Books, the Santa Monica Public Library, Mysterious Galaxy, and the Santa Monica Unified School District. And we want to thank personally all our authors and patrons who uh, donated to our festival to make sure that our school's program still runs where we gift uh, books to kids who need it most. We have raised over $10,000 in a week alone from our own community. So we are so, so happy with that. And we just want to thank from the bottom of our hearts, our staff, our producers, Shane Pangburn and Tori Hill, we would not be here without you. This video screen is brought to you <laughs> by Tori and Shane. So thank you, Tori and Shane, for everything you do and for putting up with us. Please um, don't, and don't fire us. Please don't fire us. <laughs> Please come back next year. <laughs> and I think we'll play some games, Mark. Yes. Um, and because she didn't introduce herself, I will tell you this is my beloved partner in crime, Melissa De La Cruz, who is- I'm sorry. My Co My name is <laughs> of the festival. Um, as you can see, we are joined on stage with uh, people from our board, authors that we love. We have over 80 amazing y'all authors involved this year. Um, and you can see us all day uh, right here uh, today and tomorrow and on our Zoom panels, but also on Instagram Live. So check the scheduling where we have all kinds of, you know, we have chill time with so men and we have TikTok dancing and we have a cooking class which I will in which I will burn down my house. Um, and we also have closed captioning and thank you for our sponsors who have provided us with that because new new things we know that's not cheap. Um, authors, let's wake everybody up. We're going to do our exercises. Um, and we also have closed captioning and thank you for our sponsors who have provided us with that because new new things we know that's not cheap. Um, Authors, let's wake everybody up. We're going to do our exercises because I know you've all been working out in captivity. Coffee cups up, coffee cups down. Coffee cups up, coffee cups down. And that's it. That's about all we have in our uh, in our in our athletic uh, bucket. Um, we're going to also uh, grill you with a hard hitting Q and A. Authors, thumbs up. If you woke up within the last 10 minutes. Oh, oh, here we go. <laughs> Some honest authors out there. <laughs> Thumbs up. If you have forgotten to register for your own panel that you're supposed to be speaking at. <laughs> oh, here we go. <laughs> we expected these. <laughs> Thumbs up if you are actually wearing pants right now. <laughs> Oh, lots of pants. I like <laughs> not <that> pants. <laughs> okay, 
Good enough. Before we dismiss you, can you guys unmute yourselves and give everyone a big cheer and maybe and uh, maybe we'll uh, blow everyone a kiss. So give a big unmute Ooh. yourself. And drop a big yell. Thank you for having us. You guys are amazing. You guys are so amazing. Ooh. Hey. hey. Guys. Guys. We'll, we'll blow a kiss. Count of three. One, two, three. Now we're going to know. Transition into our very, our very serious keynote, very different mood. I think I should put on something more appropriate. Oh, here we go. I'm a pseudonymous Bosch to most readers, but also uh, Rafi uh, to people who know me uh, off screen and off the page, like my old friends, uh, Melissa De La Cruz and Margaret Stoll, who are joining us live from Concord, Massachusetts today, uh, our surprise guests. Uh, they are not only the founders and directors of this festival and uh, also founders of Y'all Fest and Y'all West when it's live uh, and not just virtual, but uh, they are also unbelievably authors in their own right. Uh, what? <laughs> that, how they have time to do it, I don't know, since I don't do anything besides write and I don't have time to write. So, uh, Melissa De La Cruz in the fetching bonnet, uh, right. up there at the top of my screen, I don't know where she is on yours. Uh, she is, uh, the author of how many, 50 books now, Mel, is it? Uh, yes, I think over 50. Over 50 books, uh, from Blue Bloods to the most recent Queen's Assassin. Uh, and, you know, she's basically just a, obviously a, a powerhouse and all of our boss in the publishing world. <laughs> Margaret Stoll, uh, known to me as Margie because I've known her for quite a long while. Uh, she is the author of the Beautiful Creatures series, Captain Marvel comics, and so much more. And she, in her many hats, she also uh, happens to be a scholar of American studies, which brings us uh, to today. And uh, their new collaboration, uh, Mel and Margie have been working together on the festivals forever, but this is their first book. Uh, Mel and Margie's, as I think of it, Joe and Lori. Uh, and um, I thought we would begin uh, by talking a little bit about where this book comes from. It's a spin on an American classic, maybe even uh, one of the, uh, an American YA classic, you might even say, uh, Little Women. Uh, and I thought the f maybe we'd begin the conversation by asking both of you, what is your first memory of Little Women? How did the book come into your lives? Mel, uh, do you want to start? Mel? Margie? Oh. Do you oh. want to Little Women was, uh, I, it was the first book that made me really want to be an author and uh, understand what it was like to be an author. Uh, my mother gave it to me. My mother used to go to an indie bookstore called Campbell's Tol Tolstead near UCLA and would buy, because she knew she had a reader for a daughter, would buy whatever the uh, bookstore um, clerks had put aside for her, especially for me. And I got this book very early and read it a thousand times, was obsessed with it, wanted to be in Joe's Pickwick Club, called myself Mr. Snodgrass, you know, the whole thing. Um, my where, mom. Where did your first copy of Little Women come from, Mel? My mom also. I think I was maybe 11, and she gave me, I think, a copy from the 1960s that was really beautifully illustrated. And it was, uh, I think it was Little Women, the two books in Little Women, because they, they were published at different times. The first book was published as Little Women, the second one as Good Wives. But now they're published together. So together we know them as Little Women. And um, I just, I mean, I loved it. And I think uh, we were just talking about this, about how we were raised with the morals in that book. I mean, uh, how to live as a person, I learned from that book. How to be 
you know, almost even a wife, a friend, a sister. So. And a family, yeah, and a family even. Like, I think it really defines a, a lot of our ideas of what family is and like Margie said, of what a writer is. I also actually got my copy. I read it. I read uh, this copy of Little Women. Uh, where is it? Uh, when, I was a, when I was a kid, it was my mother's copy that I hid on the schoolyard because, you know, a boy couldn't read a book called Little Women, obviously. Uh, <laughs> Uh, but, but, I, but I did while the other boys were playing kickball. Anyway, here I am. <laughs> surprise, surprise. Great way to spend your time. <laughs> Clary, I think we really wanted you to uh, moderate this keynote because that's so fascinating to me. And I don't think it's, uh, like, I don't think it's, it's it, like, is it a statement on gender or is it about writers or is it about family? Like, what actually was that appeal? I find it so fascinating. You know, I don't know, but like you said, I think it does really describe uh, what it's like to be a writer, uh, but that's getting ahead of ourselves a little bit. Let's talk about the premise of this book, um, just because people probably uh, has, hasn't even, it's not in stores, they may not know. The, the title is a little bit of a giveaway, but, <laughs> but um, what's the genesis of this particular story? And what, and what do you want to tell us about the story that uh, doesn't spoil the, uh, the ending, since I think a little bit is about uh, endings. Mm -hmm. I, I always say, I'll do my blurb, Mark, and you can <laughs> explain. Mm -hmm. If you did not like the ending of uh, Little Women, or think it needs a different ending, and uh, you agree with the ship on the title, you will love our book. <laughs> mm -hmm. I, I mean, I, um, it, originally Mel came with the idea to me and, and basically said, I, I've been thinking about little women. I've been thinking about all these different things and she, and just kind of about how, and we didn't actually know even the movie was coming out. We knew, it, uh, little women was hitting a big anniversary, which is, you know, why the movie came out and it had impacted us so much that Mel was like, what are the like, like, like let's let's look at this world and think about like why did it impact us and how did it make us think about endings and about genre and about romance and and what was so maddening and what was so great and and we really like looked at it with love but also like what did it do to us because it was the thing that that drove us crazy and made us happy so we really took it apart. I mean just just to catch up in case there's some you know there are probably people in the world who haven't read Little Women maybe even a few who haven't seen the movie. No. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Impossible. <laughs> Little Women is the story of Jo March right who uh, and her and her family and Lori is the neighbor uh, who falls in who, who's her best friend whom she falls in love with right and then what happens in the in uh in in little women just so just to catch everybody up i mean in 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 the original book i i don't know if they fall in love but they have a very deep and uh affectionate and romantic friendship in you know at least the first part of the book you know the first part of the book ends with laurie's telling joe i'll be there for you always you know it's like a very heartfelt romantic uh statement and then in the second book you know that's all kind of tossed aside and very heartbreakingly right she marries the sister and then what, what, what else happens? And well, and she goes off with somebody else at the very yeah. end it doesn't you know yeah. you're, you're like this as a reader right I mean, I just, it was so frustrating. I always wanted to rewrite that chapter where she turns him down. Like, why? Why, Joe? <laughs> yeah. So your book takes place after that, but before it's all resolved, right? Yes. So our book, uh, our book is set in the, uh, in the middle of uh, sort of like the time when it, Joe turns in her manuscript thinking this is, you know, this will never amount to anything. It's a very small story. And then we, you know, cutting to the smash hit of it, which is true. Um, she was taken aback and in fact uh, had such little faith in it and wasn't given money for it. Instead was given a royalty, which it turns out to be one of the great jokes of women in, you know, publishing ever that that was what her family lived on forever. But um, 
but she turned it in, not thinking much of it. And then immediately, like it, it was astoundingly successful and went into reprints and became quite a thing. And Amy illustrated it, the, her real life sister, not Amy. But, um, and, and it, it was this moment that we've all experienced. Um, and I certainly experienced it. I know you did, both of you, when, you're, when a book takes off and you're not really prepared for it and everything starts to, uh, to you're reeling. And especially when that book is about your family and now you've been asked to write marriage plots specifically about your sisters and yourself, which is actually what happened, right? Like she well, then is accountable words, for that. So Joe, like Louisa May Alcott, is, is in a situation where she has to write a sequel to the book, what we now know is the second half of, of Little Women. Yeah. And your book takes place while she's trying to write the sequel. Yeah. Which is, so, so equally, just like it's a book about the romance of Joan Laurie, I mean, and for me as a writer, it's more about her, her need to write the sequel to the yeah. book and the pressure and the anxiety and the procrastination and the writer's block and the self-doubt and the depression. What would you know? What do you know about that, <laughs> Raph? What do you possibly know about that? <laughs> Well, I think we have to explain a little that the Joe in the book, you know, is a character that we've created, uh, kind of conflating Louisa May Alcott, the stuff that we knew about her, that Margie uh, researched. I mean, you were just a fountain of so much information uh, that I didn't even know about the, the author. Uh, so, we, so Margie did so much research into um, Louisa May Alcott's life uh, that we then kind of shaped Joe, you know, kind of accordingly. So I, I was at Stanford and Yale. I was an American literature and an American studies grad student. I was in an American studies PhD. And um, my specialty was post-Civil War, you know, was the 19th century. So like I specifically worked for years and years in this, um, you know, in the era that uh, Alcott was writing in. And so when Mel pitched the idea to me, I was like, finally, <laughs> Finally, my, you know, my PH dropout status could, could come into some use. And I actually went as an undergraduate to Amherst College and um, where Emily Dickinson's house is and spent a ton of time you know, on the grounds there and, and thinking about that and writing about that. So the fact that there's been kind of a revival. I'm waiting for the Emily Dickinson book to come out next. I know, we'll right? That. You can see the show. I mean, Dickinson is on right now. I found that to be kind of a zeitgeist moment. Like, we wrote a book, and there's the there's the movie, you know. We didn't realize the movie for Little Women was a retelling. Like, we thought it was a straight, you know, a straight adaptation. So that was... It opens, the, I saw the movie, and we had just finished our book. And when I saw it, and it opens with the scene with the publisher, I was like, oh, my God, this is our book. And it was so crazy how you know, um, it was in the air. Both had that sort of the layers of this yeah. is the author, this is the mm -hmm. character, um, this is the story, what really happened. And it's kind of, I mean, what's interesting about it, that she did that, I mean, uh, you know, I Gretchen Gerwig and, and you guys, I mean, it's like Little Women is almost a cultural inheritance, yeah. isn't it? Or a, um, you know, it, it's like it's a-, a <laughs> yeah, a text that almost every that almost everybody I mean almost everybody owns in a way. Well, yeah. I, yeah, I think that happens with a lot of public domain properties, but I think it especially happens for women, where we go back and look at the stories and what we are allowed to say, and you know, the stories about stories about women making stories are particularly powerful if you are a woman making stories and maybe even a woman reading stories, you know what I mean? Because we have to work harder to get to those narratives. Right, and even at the time, in, in your, with one of my, a uh, uh, moment that I enjoyed in the book, uh, there are all, there is uh, Joe getting all the fan letters and not wanting to read them because there's so much pressure, it's, the, it's all the pressure of these, these girls writing to her and they all say, wait, Girls were writing to Joe with one question: "What happens next?" And it's and it's that way in which uh, they had a kind of ownership over the story, and their their impatience yeah. that I think a lot of us who've written series, especially, can relate to. Yeah. Oh, Alcott absolutely had a fandom and dealt with the pressures of fandom, and her journals are hilarious. Her letters about like, and we put some of that in the book where they're like. She, she actually, Joe actually says, I mean, Alcott actually says, oh my gosh, if only my readers, if, 
if the readers start coming and seeing this damp, earwiggy place, like she just, she oh, okay, that was I, I have, Literally, I have written down as a, a question on paper, what does earwiggy mean? <laughs> what is the word earwiggy? Well, mm -hmm. earwig, is, oh, earwig is a bug. And mm -hmm. I think it was just about like, you know, the reality of the creepy crawlies and everything being broken at Orchard mm -hmm. House. At and the musty, right? Yeah, yeah. so the, the backdrop behind us is actually the setting. You see it in a lot of the movie adaptations, and that's the setting of our book, which is really like the, the hearth of the home that you, you basically is what Alcott's describing in in uh, Little Women. But it is fascinating that she was dealing with that kind of like pressure between Instagram and real life. You know what I mean? She was like, they have this idea um, and I, and it's not our family and I can't handle it. Was, was and she did not want to give in to the fans. She did not want to marry Joe to Lori. She said, you know, I won't do it for anything. Um, and that kind of broke my heart as a fan of the book, you know, realizing it was a yeah, that she was going to keep them apart, you know. So. Would you consider your book a sort of fan fiction? Oh, absolutely. <laughs> wish, wish fulfillment. I mean, yes. I just, <laughs> we wrote it for ourselves. <laughs> yeah, it's her right. It is absolutely her right to say, uh, everyone is pressuring me about this. And even though this is the genre arc I set up, and I'm like a huge genre writer, um, you know, the, the Joe in the stories, uh, Louise Malcott also wrote those sort of Rodrigo, you know, Rodin, like, like that sort, I mean, that was a very big influence in the 19th century. Those she was a romance writer. Yeah, the, the press. But she wasn't the, precious. The press. But she, no. And I know, and I know, bo I'm knowing both of you well, I know that you both have a little of an axe grind about, you know, writers who are precious or pretentious about their work. Well, um, we are, we're genre writers. I mean, we're genre writers. <laughs> and, and Louise Alcott was, was definitely of your, of, your, of your ilk that way, right? And, and it's sort of, but, but it's, you know, but at the same time, and I do think it's totally real that your character and, and the historic Louise May Alcott and all of us, you are both things at once. You're a genre writer and you try and it's a job and you know, you want to give them what they want, but at the same time you have integrity and it's your project and you want and and you, and you have your vision and and you take it seriously in a whole other way, all at the same time. Yeah. I think uh, we yeah. also identify as readers for I think probably readers first. And um, so this book, definitely writing it was the most in touch I've ever been with myself as a reader connected to myself as a writer. Like, like the heart of this book was what Mel and I experienced as a reader. And mm -hmm. then it was our job to connect to like, to the character of Joe as a writer. And that okay. was- really and, you, and funnily enough, what you, the gift you're giving to readers who aren't writers is that they're gonna really know what it's like. Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. You're a writer. Yeah. After and then we can talk about how we work together because I'm, I'm just glancing at some of the Q&As. Okay, you know, go ahead. And how we work together. How did you together. work together? Yeah. Um, you know, Is it different than running a festival? Well until it didn't. And we were screaming at each other. <laughs> and it was like, you know, two sisters fighting passionately over this project. So. Yeah, no, absolutely. Um, I never had a sister. I mean, the closest thing I've had to a sister was Cami Garcia, who I wrote Beautiful Creatures with, because it was a similar experience where you're like, I let you know, like, we're going to like go to the mattresses about like what we think this character would do. And I think the thing you end up with, if you love the person, really love the person you're working with, like a sister, is something that's all the better for it. But I think knowing you too, I, I think I, I do feel like that probably you, your biggest fights were during the writing of this book that you've ever had. Is that not true? It was like kind of this, it was literally about one line. Like I was really, really upset about one line and I can't even remember. I can't which, either. I <laughs> like, like I'm like, oh, yeah. really about the line. <laughs> Marking up deleting it or writing over it, I don't remember anymore. But I remember I was really upset because it was I, in that chapter where she that said, I think some of my most favorite things in the books were Mel's. You know what I mean? Okay. Like, so there's, there's absolutely like, like, I guess I'm also so proud, right? Like I'm so, I love this book. I and, my and favorite I, writer. It was yeah. so great. It was I, amazing. Yeah. And it Speaking was- Speaking of lines. 
Do you have, do you want to, uh, okay, I'm going to read the first line, even though you should be reading it because it's so short. Okay. Little, wim little Women, that's the title. <laughs> um, <laughs> so tell me about the, well, this, tell, let's, let's tell me about that line and also how it might relate to your book. Um, I think we were, we were looking, I think we were looking at littleness the whole time. I think uh, we dismissiveness of women, you know, and even internalize that because Louisa May Alcott thought this is just some book of scribbles I wrote about my family. I mean, she was hanging out, you know, with Ralph Waldo Emerson and Thoreau and like big, yeah. deep intellectual thinkers. Right. And she thought of herself as an intellectual also and was kind of maybe a little annoyed that right. there's- well, I mean, like, to, to, it almost sounds ironic when you think, when you kind of hear it from contemporary years, like, you know. Yeah. It's she, almost like little women in quotation marks. What, what, uh, now, what did she want to call the book? Do we know? Was there another title in real life that she wanted to call it? No, I think there, so. there, there are a bunch of different, um, you know, subtitles and things. But, um, but really, the thing we wanted to uh, fixate, to focus on, was about, like, the process, like the slippery process of renaming, republishing, putting the book together, the, the part of it she didn't own and the right. part that she did in terms of well, the process. What about, then, what about your book? It's called, was Joe and Lori always the title? No, no the original title was Little Sisters, um, which we <laughs> like a lot. <laughs> I think partly because we, we really were focused on the family in right. a lot of ways. Um, but, you know, the romance was definitely uh, an important angle to it. The, um, you know, the- um, And the publishers also, and in, 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 in the fans, the public, I mean, it's sort of this part of the story. I mean, it's all this tension between what is the story about and what's it going to be. Um, it, in a way, it's just like the plot of the book, isn't it? Yeah, I, I mean, actually one of my very favorite parts, the, the two things I liked the best in the book, one of them was, was the thing that that came from me that I'm obsessed with, which is the garden scene when they're 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 all trying to sort of plot out, you know, they're, when the sisters are trying to help Joe solve her plot problems, which are of course about them and their futures, right. um, because that's so real and it's like the conversations you and Mel and I have trying to solve our own plot problems. But the other one, Mel did, which, which is really my favorite thing in the book, which is just the endless agonizing over all the ways this book could end and all the ways this story could go. And I guess they're versions of the same scene, right? Yeah. Um, but it's so, it's, it's just so, it's so real to us and to the process. Just, you're never gonna get it right. It never is gonna feel right until it feels right. And, and that was really also our experience of this. I yeah, love the garden scene. It's maddening unless you, until it isn't. Yeah. No, and, uh, when you made every, the garden scene was one of the first chapters that Margie wrote and it is just so funny because she just dismisses Professor Bear as a cabbage, you know, just, he's just a fake cabbage in their garden and it's just like, oh, it's done. Like there's nothing more to explain. Yeah. <laughs> Well, you know, looking, I'm looking through the, the questions from the from our audience. A lot of them are like, your books are wonderful and I love you guys and I'm not, so I'm not going to read that stuff to you. Because I'm no, not, read it. That's not, yeah, that's not I'm, I'm looking for some criticisms. I'm not finding them, but I'll, I'll read Raffi it. is very famous. I said, just tell me, just tell me the just tell me the mean stuff, the nice stuff I can say to myself. And Raffi said, just tell me the nice stuff, the mean <laughs> stuff is all I ever say to myself. <laughs> Who are our um, favorite what? little women Somebody characters? Says, do, you like cat do you like cats? That was one of the questions I saw. Well, I have a book called Cats versus Robots. And, and uh, in fact, on that side, I do side cats. So yes. I no cats for me. I mean, I don't mind them, <laughs> but I, I'm a dog person. <laughs> That's because you're friendly and I'm difficult. There you go. We are, we are our animals. Um, what are your favorite Little Women characters besides Joe and Lori, somebody asked. I like Mr. Brooke, you know, I don't know. I like- What I like, are you saying? I know, I know, and I remember when we wrote the book, we were like, oh, he's so boring. And I was like, kind of like, you know, that was like my little confession. I actually like him. <laughs> I think it's tragic that he dies in the original one. I think that always made him seem so romantic to me. Okay. I, if you, oh, go, go ahead, Margie. I really, I really love um, 
I really loved, uh, I loved experience. I loved, I loved experiencing Amy in this one and I loved experiencing Amy in the movie. Yes. Uh, and actually one of Mel's ideas in the beginning was like a wicked version of Little Women where from Amy's perspective, which I always thought was really fascinating, but we didn't ultimately think we could pull that off um, because- If Mel was a so, little character, who would she be? Oh, Mel is Amy. <laughs> Mel is Jamie. <laughs> Mel is Joe plus Amy. Jamie. That is Mel Holy. In fact, you should only ever cosplay Jamie. And who is, who is Margie Mel? Like Margie I'm Lori. And Meg. Oh, yeah, and Lori. <laughs> Margie's I'm Jory. Jory. <laughs> yeah, you're, you're Jory. Yeah. <laughs> you're Jory and Jamie. Together. Yeah. <laughs> Raffi, who are you? You're Joe. You're, uh, yeah, you're mm. Jory. You're also Jory. Yeah, a different Jory. I'm mean, the flip side of Jory. I really like putting, I love that we had, um, I love that we had Charles Dickens in this. Charles Dickens was such an influence for her and the Pickwick Club is, you know, that's a response to a Dickens story. So like, like Alcott has Joe writing fan fiction throughout Little Women, the book. Right. And, and just to be clear, in, in Joe and Lori, uh, Joe get, gets to go to New York City to hear Charles Dickens read. Yes. So um, we, it's a really exciting thing for the character. Is that based on a real event that might have happened? Yes. I mean, Alcott didn't go. Alcott never went to, um, to see him on tour, but in the tour, uh, Charles Dickens had two really influential tours in America that were like, it was like, the Adele concert, you know what I mean? It was like, it was a thing that it's just- just like when us writers go on tour now then. <laughs> <laughs> exactly the same. <laughs> People asking him where the bathroom is. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and I really wanted to get the fandom, that sort of like mass 19th century fandom in there because there were such crushing fandoms and she writes about him in her letters. Oh, Charlie, she was very sad when old Charlie died. I mean, she, she talks about Charlie like she, you know, like he was a, a factor. But but everyone who reads that book knows Pickwick was such a, you know, was such an imagination um, for the character Joe that we really wanted to play that out and say what would being a fan, a reader fan like our readers and like us, what would that be like at that time? Because that's how writers are made. Writers are made from readers and from loving books so much that you invent fake you know, publishing clubs in your attic. That's, we all know that's how this worked. I was the head of the Dark is Rising fan club in third grade. I talk about it all the time. I was the kind of reader where you memorize the poem from the front of the book. When the dark comes rising, ships shall turn it back. Three from the circle, three from the track, earth, air, water, bronze, fire, stone. Five shall remain, one go alone. Like, that's what we did. That is, Wait, that again. that is how this works. Mm -hmm. what? Okay, here's, a, here's, a, here's another question from the the peanut gallery. What was the most stressful thing about writing this novel? Mm. Hmm. I mean, certainly, certainly you were doing a very good job of presenting Joe's stress. <laughs> uh, somebody asked if we were in the same room or, you know, do we, uh, are we go, but we actually just work virtually. We just email chapters back and forth um, and then text each other. Um, and that wasn't even that hard. I, I think people miss that, you know, technically this is the first book together, but Margie and Ravi and I, you know, share our books and we kind of, you know, suggest and edit. And uh, it was kind of, it's kind of funny that this is the first book with both of our names on it. <laughs> I know. Because we our are sort of all over each other's books. <laughs> we are the Pickwick Club. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I, I, uh, I mean, I've been reading everything Rafi wrote since he was 14, right? And, and vice versa. And Mel and I, out of the garbage when he's frustrated. Yeah. <laughs> I Rafi love that. Throws all his drafts yeah. away. Yeah, but that's that's part of my, my writing process. He's always <laughs> Margie saving me. Um, so some people are asking where they can pre-order it. You can pre-order it uh, from Blue Bicycle Books. You will get a signed book plate. I don't know if both of us have signed it, but we do have signed copies with both of us that is available through um, all the major retailers. Comes out June 2nd and uh, yeah. Um, what are your favorite books? Which books would you recommend? Somebody's asking. 
Um, right now, I, I mean, I read a lot of YA. I've been reading a lot in middle grade, and I love all, all of everything you two have ever written. Um, I'm a very, I mean, like, like the character Joe, I write a lot, I write diversely in a lot of, you know, genre stuff. So I work a lot with Marvel also. So I've, I uh, just came off, you know, a Spider-Man noir run. I'm all kind of all over the place, like I know the two of you are. Um, I've been reading a lot of nonfiction, weirdly, right now. That's my response to the pandemic. I've been reading um, a lot of Churchill. Uh, who's sort of the epic wartime leader. And I feel like I live in London during the Blitz right now. I relate to rationing tea and, you know, worrying about where your eggs are gonna come from. So my comfort has been history, weirdly enough. But Mel? Um, I mean, my favorite books are Dune, Lord of the Rings, and probably the Harry Potter series. So um, very different from Little Women, but, you know, Little Women was one of the books I read at that age that I read Dune and Lord of the Rings. Um, I read Harry Potter when I was a mom, which was so, I was so much older. So, <laughs> but it brought the same love of reading, you know, and Harry Potter kind of uh, made our genre happen. The reason we're all employed is because of JK Rowling. So um, yeah, yeah I, I still read fantasy. The earliest books I loved were were actually American history. It was Caddy Woodlawn, a weird book you'll never hear of again, and um, and and uh, uh, Lois Lowry. What it was it? Lois? Mm -hmm. It was it was a book about the strawberry picker. I can't remember. Um, it was and and um, of course uh, Little House in the Big Woods and all of those books, which you know. You, you hear about Anne of Green Gables, which is, you've seen on TV, but like the, like uh, and with North America, but I went through that whole phase and then I fell into Narnia and like sat in my closet and never came out for a long time, Lord of the Rings. I actually worked on a Dune video game, which was um, a highlight. So I, I drifted more into sci-fi and fantasy, but I, but this, so this is a return to my very early, early roots. Uh, how does like how does uh, inhabiting the world of a classic like Little Women uh, differ from inhabiting a, a a franchise world, which you guys have both done, writing for example Mel the Disney characters and Descendants or Margie some of the Marvel universes you've been mm -hmm. working in, um, or for that matter creating your own universe. Um, was there something very specific about going into a, a books universe, you know, that was from a, a classic novel, or is it just another universe to play in? I mean, it's interesting because we worked, like, I wrote the outline and Margie wrote the sample chapter. And so Margie was really, really concerned about the tone. And I was like, Margie's what? always concerned about the tone. <laughs> I was like, why are we concerned about the tone? Just write it. You know, because there are Margie famously about. said at the beginning of this, before this conversation, Margie's like, "Tone is all we have." Yeah, no, and, and it was fascinating because to see her process, because she read the letter, she read all her research, she read the book, she really got immersed in the book, and then she started to write, and I was like, "Oh, I get it. Okay." <laughs> well, because because not only do writers have tones, but periods of time have tones and people construct sentences so, so differently. Um, and, 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 I, and Louise May Alcott has a tone. Yeah, and I was so aware of it uh, from grad school that I just thought, um, like, if we don't get this right, it's, it's garbage. You know what I mean? That was sort of my, my thought, was like just sort of the mechanics of it and the, the on a level of a word in a sentence. So I was really worried. Well, I, I mean, I, perhaps being very biased, think you guys did an excellent job on that. And it feels like characters from the period, it feel, it does remind, you know, it does feel like you're in the little women world. At the same time, you know, it's because I was reading, uh, not the entire thing, but I did pick up Little Women again uh, before this conversation. And, you know, it's, it's denser, it's a, no a 19th century novel. Uh, it's not the way most, no most YA novels in particular are written today. Um, I think you did a very good job of making it contemporary at the same time. I mean, like there was something about there's the pacing and the, you know, and the readability is very contemporary and, and specifically YA, but not in a kind of hit you over the head, you know, trying to make it cool and contemporary way. But yeah, well, Mel is a, Mel is a, 
expert structuralist. Yeah. I mean, that's like nobody. I yeah. hate the boring parts of books. <laughs> I think there are some parts of the book I still have not read. Yeah. Mel, so Mel, Mel, Mel's always trying to get you to cut chapters. Yeah, mm -hmm. I'm just like, let's get, let's get to the kissing. Come on. <laughs> But then you have to hold the kissing so that people turn pages, you know? <laughs> so it's all yeah. about the key. Raffi, It's like life that way. Raffi mm -hmm. and I are the, uh, we're the ADD people in real life, and Mel is the literary ADD. Who's <laughs> like me, like, no, 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 no. no. Keep going. <laughs> uh, very funny. All right. Well, I, uh, I, Sadly, we are at our uh, we are at our 10:42 mark, and we're two minutes over. Uh, Rafi, pseudonymous Bosch, uh, where can our readers find your books, and what is your next book out? Ah, um, I have a new chapter book series called The Unbelievable Oliver. Uh, the new one comes out in a couple of weeks. It's called Un The Unbelievable Oliver and the Sodden and a Half Dads, uh, in which. Uh, the marriage between two dads uh, goes terribly wrong uh, when the magic trick goes awry. Mm -hmm. And um, so the, the, the magic of marriage becomes <laughs> quite an autobiography. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. And Mel, uh, mm. our book is out June 2nd. And our book is out. If you pre order and send a copy of your receipt to Penguin, there's a link somewhere that you can find on Y'all West. You will get a tea tin, which is amazing. Are you getting the theme here? Oh, yes. We didn't have our, we, I, you know, this, after this exhausting conversation, I think I really feel, feel like I need a cup of tea. <laughs> Your tea cheers. I'm sure that's tea, Raffi. Cheers, guys. Okay, cheers. We, had that out. we really messed that up, didn't we? Let's try again. Margie, can I have some, do you, do you have a cup for me? Sure. There you go. Oh, oh thank you. There we go. Hold it up. I'll give you some. Us. Here you go, Mel. Here we go. Our virtual. Okay, uh, well, toasting, toasting a happy y'all west, a happy y'all stay home, happy reading uh, in this um, sheltering at home with a book time. Readers, we are thinking of all of you. We could not love you more. And we do this festival for you, but you're doing this for us, and we're super appreciative.